The blimpy story is sad. After being a potential leader of the sub-sandwich niche in the fast food industry, the business somehow lost this position to Subway. And it gets worse. Blimpy is going through a turbulent air of growth and failure. And as things are looking, it may not survive. Or will it? Before co-founders Tony Conza and Peter DiCarlo admitted they weren't skilled businessmen and provided this by being incautious about the cost of goods and employee salaries, they started Blimpy quite nicely. It all began with Jersey Mike's. Remember them? But wait, we aren't saying Jersey Mike's began this business. No, Mike didn't start Blimpy, but it inspired three friends from St. Peter's Prep in Jersey City to create it. Tony Conza, Peter DiCarlo, and Angelo Baldassari were at a party when the drinks and atmosphere, instead of making them relax, threw them into deep thoughts. The three high school friends were thinking about what they could do after graduating. After a while, they stumbled and settled on opening and owning a sandwich shop. Their reason was simple. The three friends were intrigued by Jersey Mike's, which at the time was known as Mike's Submarines success at Pleasant Point, New Jersey. The friends believed their business could achieve similar heights. Now that they had an idea, they had to settle for a name. And then the first of their conflicts as co-founders began. Tony, Peter, and Angelo couldn't decide on a name. The three agreed that they didn't want their business to have a similar name to other sandwich shops, but they had different names. Tony felt the word sandwiches subs sounded like a greasy spoon. He wanted to go with the name Hoagies, but the other two reminded him that the residents of their locality would not be familiar with the name like Philadelphians. Tony wasn't about to give up. Determined to find his unique name, he made an unlikely consultation. The co-founder picked up a dictionary and found something that caught his attention. Tony saw the word blimp, and the picture attached looked familiar. It looked like the bread of a submarine sandwich. Tony shared his findings with his buddies, and they approved the name. The trio graduated from high school and pooled $2,500 in funding to open the first blimpy at 7th and Washington Street streets in Hoboken, New Jersey on May 6, 1964. The founding trio were eager to make a name for themselves and began to expand aggressively. This would be one of their greatest mistakes, but we'll tell you more about that later. By 1967, the business had left its Hoboken locale and grew into the Manhattan market. There were 10 locations, with Tony and Peter owning four of them. However, the two of them realized their inexperience and the locations became too much to handle for them. They had to do something to save their business and their solution was to sell the locations under their control and fully focus on franchising. The duo believed that franchising could increase their business's profit. However, while they agreed on franchising, they conflicted about where to expand. This would be their most significant conflict yet, greater than when they wanted to choose a name. Peter wanted the business to remain on the East Coast and Tony had an expansion vision that took the company southward. The two of them couldn't compromise, and without a choice, they decided to split. Peter took the company and most of its locations in New York and New Jersey and continued East Coast locations. Tony, on the other hand, took the original company, renamed it International Blimpy Corporation, and went on an insane expansion drive. Tony realized his mistake. He saw that aggressive expansion had harmed the company's identity. The franchise owners had a poor attitude towards customers and didn't maintain proper standards of cleanliness. And this wasn't all. The rebellious franchise owners didn't even stick to Toby's menu and sold Chinese food and pizza. While this was a call for the company to expand its menu, the business faced problems greater than that of its menu. Turned out, the public didn't think Blimpy to be worthy of investment, and its attempt to raise money by going public in 1983 didn't do much, and Tony's inexperience struck again. This time, his mistakes would have far-reaching consequences that would eventually lead to the company's unfortunate fall. So, what did Tony do? And if you like to learn about the history of your favorite eateries, be sure to subscribe for more content like this. Tony decided the submarine business had become saturated and wanted to jump ship to the next big thing. And so in 1984, he opened a tablecloth restaurant called the Border Cafe and sold southwestern dishes on Manhattan's Upper East Side. His new business was a hit as Tony kept making the big bucks and he opened more locations in New York. However, it drew his attention away from his sub sandwich business and his competitor, Subway, saw an opening that it capitalized on. Subway took expansion to another level during this period and overtook Blimpy. The disappointment kept coming for Tony, 
as Border Cafe became a borderline waste of money. The restaurant bled Tony's finances, and despite trying to save the business by bringing in New York Yankee legend Dave Winfield, the restaurant's descent was brutal. Tony was back to his sandwich business, but things were worse than when he left it. The company's stock price had plummeted, and he had Subway breathing down his neck, but Tony was only down. He wasn't out, and he began to make moves to salvage things. The entrepreneur focused on Atlanta and began to sell franchise locations there. By 1987, the business opened its 50th store and things began to look up. These improvements were all due to Tony's gritty approach to making his business work at all costs. After listening to Blimpy's franchise owners, Tony made a list of 101 small improvements, which he gave to the chain's high-ranking managers. Tony then focused on improving communication with his franchise owners and ensured they followed company guidelines. Instead of his initial loose approach, Tony began personally visiting franchise locations, which was around 140 at the time. Time. Through failures, he gained experience, and knowing that it wasn't sustainable to always visit locations, Tony created a council, which would inform him of Blimpy's biggest problems. Tony wasn't done. The co-founder wrote a newsletter called No Baloney News, which he gave to his franchise owners to guide them constantly. He also gave the locations a hotline they could use to drop a tip or relay their frustration. Blimpy was wiser now. The business paid attention to customer demands and evolved its business to meet those demands. When people began began to become more health conscious, Blimpy saw an avenue to be part of the leaders in making a new low-calorie menu. The business called this new healthier menu the Blimpy Light. The new menu had tuna, crab, chicken, and turkey salads put on pita bread. The menu was a bang, and the company began to evolve even further to the point that it made the healthier option a sub-brand. All these improvements boosted sales, and by the end of the 1980s, the company had enough profit to undergo another aggressive expansion. Like before, this put the company in a bad situation, but the business didn't experience these problems early enough. In 1990, the chain was flying high, reaching $120 million per year in revenue and feeling confident. The business made another play on the stock market. This time, the company was on the NASDAQ exchange, and it did so well that it grew to 500 locations. Encouraged, the business spent more on advertisement, leading to a positive crash in the rate of franchise failures. From 10% franchise locations only had a 3% chance of failure, and in Chicago, Tony allowed his franchise owners to use their 6% annual franchise fee for advertising. This wasn't enough. Tony wanted to improve the business more, and he saw an opportunity. The brand began to franchise into convenience store locations, partnering with Texaco Food Marts in Mississippi and the food court at the University of Texas. The company's decision to work with convenience stores coincided with plummeting cigarette sales due to the United States law. Many places banned smoking indoors, and smokers looked for an alternative in sandwiches. The company also explored more non-traditional venues, called the Blimpy Kiosk, which allowed it to have locations in stadiums, fairs, and other similar places. The booth served four types of sandwiches, drinks, and side orders. There was also the Blimpy Bakery, which allowed the company to sell different kinds of baked goods. All of this led to an increase in sales, and from 670 outlets by 1994, the company had its 800th location. In 1997, the company invested in Maui Tacos, and in 1999, it expanded its menu. However, all of this didn't save it from its eventual, brutal, near failure. By the end of the 90s, the business's income fell aggressively, but the company had 1,853 locations by 2001. Hope came when Jeffrey K. Endervelt, a franchise owner, led a private investor group to buy the company from Tony for $25.7 million. Tony sold and remained an advisor to Jeffrey, who became the chairman, president, and chief executive officer. However, the company still struggled, and in 2006, Kahala Group bought the company. Still, the company continued to freefall, and by 2011, it had 739 locations. It got worse and changed hands again in 2016 when MTY Food Group Inc. bought Kahala. Currently, the company has shed most of its locations to 156. The question is, will the future be kind to Blimpy, or is it on its path to the end? Blimpy came to be due to friendship and ambition, but the founders soon realized having a business is not an easy affair. They made mistakes and eventually decided to split to pursue their vision of the business. Blimpy has experienced everything. Insane profits, 
loss, and uncooperative franchise owners. Still, it has managed to survive. But there's the big question. Should the founders have split up or would they have a better chance together? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to support our channel.